Hello, and welcome to the holidays. And I get asked a lot about projectors. What projector do you recommend as a gift for myself or for my friends? And if we're going to be talking about projectors um, and you're looking for the best in projection, um, you got to look at Sony. Sony is definitely one of the major players. And joining me is not Santa Claus. It's my partner, Rob Brennan. So, Rob, how are you? I'm doing well, Phil. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to talk about projection, and it is terrifying because I've started to receive holiday packages my wife has purchased from Amazon. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still not finished with my Halloween decorations. Exactly. So it's we'll, uh... <laughs> yeah, and it's probably, say, gifts from the North Pole. But, um, but we're here to talk about um, some great ideas and gifts that you could look at if you're a projection enthusiast or you're buying for a projection enthusiast. And we want to discover some of the great products that have been introduced. And one of them that really stands out to me is the 715 um, projector. I really, really, really love this projector. I had the opportunity to review this projector along with its big brother, the 915, the VW 915 ES, and both of them offer outstanding performance. Now, you do pay a little bit of a premium for a Sony 4K SXRD HDR projector. So, Rob, let's talk about the 715 and why is this one of the ultimate Christmas gifts for that enthusiast? Absolutely. Well, of course, you know, projection is it makes a great Christmas uh, a gift for just about anybody because it's this big screen experience. It's the, the immersion that you get. You get drawn into, um, you know, your content in a, in a totally new way. I mean, I can't tell you the number of people that I've spoken to that have made a switch from, you know, what they thought was a big TV to a projector. And they suddenly feel obligated to rewatch all of their favorite movies, um, you know, whether it's rewatching, you know, Top Gun or rewatching you know, uh, all of the, you know, James Bond films or whatever they happen to, you know, uh, remember fondly. Um, that's really what, what makes it such a, such a, such a great gift. Uh, but specifically you talked about the, the VW 715 ES and, and what makes that a, a phenomenal projector. And of course it is native 4k, which is, is something that we actually have to say these days in the world of projectors. There are a ton of 4k projectors out there. Um, not all of them are actually native 4K. Uh, uh, in fact, I would say the, the majority, in terms of SKUs, right, the majority of them are are not native 4K. Um, well, let's let's talk that, about that real quick before we even go any yeah. any further. Now, you will see lots of projectors that can um, uh, uh, emulate 4K on a screen, right. um, either by um, pixel shifting or mirror wobulation on a DLP. And right. it does a pretty good job giving you increasing the resolution, but there's something about a three chip um, projector with native 4K imagers in it that really um, gives you ben benefits, actually even beyond when it comes to the resolution. So what are some right. of those things? You know, absolutely. What it really what it really boils down to is, you know, there's this idea that that resolution is, you know, just a number. It's, it's, you know, just purely how many pixels, you know, that you have. But what we're really talking about with a with the three chip system is a true reproduction of how content is shot and authored and mastered um, and then set through production and ultimately, you know, ultimately consumed. You know, one of the things that I found when I take a look at whether it's, you know, uh, three LCD based. Uh, pixel shifting or wobulation, which is you know DLP te uh, based technology, is they do a good job of it of, a, of improving kind of the base resolution of those products, which typically is high definition, um, and it does a, about as good a job as Sony does with processing, just on a standard high definition projector. But 4K is a whole other you know kind of animal, and there there are penalties that you pay when you're showing with DLP either one color at a time sequentially. Um, this can cause issues, especially with motion. Um, it can cause issues with contrast. You'll have uh, uh, the mirrors as they as they wobulate, right, as they move back and forth to either block the light or redirect the light to the lens. Um, it's not instantaneous. It's not just on off. You know, as that mirror kind of moves, you can imagine, you know, the light that stays coming in bouncing through the lens and that and the mirror has to start to move well for the first couple of degrees 
it's actually dragging that pixel across the screen until it finally drags it off the edge and then it disappears. Mm -hmm. And so you don't get as good contrast, uh, you know, as you would hope to um, mm -hmm. with uh, with a single chip, you know, DLP. So there, there are various penalties that you pay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. the, on the other hand, if they're less expensive, which of course is nice, and I'm not here to, to debate that, um, but ultimately when we're talking about the 715, what you have is this first and foremost, this incredibly solid foundation of, of native 4K. And what you add to that is absolutely best in class HDR performance. Mm -hmm. um, and this comes from a new processor. You know, okay. processing is, uh, you know, fundamentally uh, mm -hmm. the most important component of your display. You can have great individual parts. You can have great individual components. And if you can't extract from those components high performance and you can't get them to work together, you know, to cooperate well, to respond quickly, uh, to be able to understand, you know, and, 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 and correctly handle the difference between streaming content versus uh, optical uh, content versus gaming content versus fast motion sports content, you know, you're not going to have a good time. Let's recap a few of these things real sure. quick. The first thing, there are ways to sharpen your resolution and give you perceived 4K resolution on the screen um, besides utilizing three a, a native three chip display. But right. those give have some sacrifices. If you're looking for higher contrast as well as um, richer, more vibrant colors, um, the the brightness of white and the brightness of red is the same. You need mm -hmm. a three it was, a three LCD is the way to go. So if you're looking for um, high resolution and um, and high contrast and rich right. colors, um, the three chip is the way to go. But it's going to cost you more money. That's just the way it is. Could a DLP right. be brighter? Yes. But you're not buying Absolutely. a flashlight. We're talking about these are home theater projectors that are normally used at this price point in a darkened room where black really matters. Think of black as um, silence and audio. So the, the blacker it is, the more richer the colors appear. And that is what you pay a premium for. And currently DLPs just do not have that capability um, at these price points to deliver the native contrast you can get from a a three chip 4K native display, such as something like a 715. Absolutely, um, and, you know, and, and three chip, just real quick, the three chip is so important that th there are three chip variants of DLP. Mm -hmm. Those are phenomenal projectors. Mm -hmm. They are quite expensive. And um, quite big. Yeah, and they're quite large. This is a lesson that we've learned in the industry. We've, we've mm -hmm. known this lesson for, for a long time. In order to get great contrast and great color and great motion and, and high resolution and sharp images, it does take isolating, right, each of those RGB channels. That, mm -hmm. that has to happen. Um, to cut cost, to reduce size, there are some things that we can do, and, and there are penalties that ultimately, um, you know, that, that we pay uh, to make mm -hmm. that happen. Now, the, the next thing is, and we were just talking about this, Rob, is the brain. So um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of different content your projector is going to have to play, whether it's HD, Absolutely. whether it's regular 4K, or whether it's 4K HDR, or, um, or any kind of, even HDR gaming in HD, which is you can actually do. Um, there's, and even when you look at HDR, there's, there, HDR is recorded and mastered in a lot of different ways. And a lot of projectors struggle with HDR. There's basically only two right. brands that I have met, come across really, that really can handle HDR content um, well. And that is because of their focus on good video processing. And one thing that stands out about this projector is it has a new big brain that um, ensures that it knows it can get the most out of what you're looking at, regardless of whether it's HD or 4K or whatever type of 4K. Right. So, Rob, can you talk about what is in this big brain that's in this actual chip that we that we're talking about here? Happy to. So the X, the processor itself is called the X1 for projector, and the the first thing to know about it, which I think is very interesting and and, and kind of cool is that uh, it is derived from the best-in-class processors that we've developed for our flat panel televisions. You know, televisions are produced you know, much more rapidly, 
uh, models, new models are introduced pretty much annually. And so processing on the TV side gets, gets a chance to refresh, you know, quite regularly. Projectors have, typically have a longer life cycle, you know, three to four years or so. And so by, by stealing basically all the lessons that we've learned on the TV side of the business, where our mat, professional mastering monitor comes from, where not only, you know, LCD and OLED, you know, flat panels come from, we're able to, to take advantage of uh, just increased performance. So that's where the chip comes from. What makes it incredibly powerful? is that it has the ability to analyze each and every frame of video of every piece of content that you're watching. So we're not doing scene by scene analysis, we're doing frame by frame analysis. You know, not and not just down to, you know, oh, what are these, um, you know, what are these objects, you know, on the screen? Is this a bright, is this a bright image or is this a dark image? It's, no, this is a soccer ball and this is a person and this is a unicorn and a laser and a, you know, an explosion. Uh, and then we can apply different techniques um, to all of those, you know, kind of assets. And in terms of HDR performance, there's a couple of things that, that we do. Uh, the first is something called dynamic HDR enhancer. And basically, what one of the challenges you have with the projector is compared to a television, right? Projectors aren't particularly that bright. Mm -hmm. You know, televisions, um, because they're you know, basically direct lit, right? The light's coming straight off of the, the panel, mm -hmm. blasted you in the face. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the projector, it's reflected off of the surface and it's diffused. And it's susceptible to the you know the size of the screen and the gain of the screen and the distance of the projector and the age of the bulb and you know, all these factors. Um, they're they're similar, right, in terms of HDR expression, but they're very different in how they get there. And so what happens with the HDR contrast enhancer is again we're taking a look at every single every single frame of video, um, and then we're we're making decisions on how best to handle that individual frame of video separate from every other frame in the content that you're watching. So you're able to take advantage of, of inky blacks with lots of shadow detail and really dark scenes, and you're not paying a super penalty um, in bright scenes in terms of color saturation and you know, uh, extreme ex excessive you know, white clipping, or, or vice versa, where you are you know, so enamored with, with making certain that you have you know, absolute peak luminance that you're paying the price of elevated black level. That's the mm -hmm. other thing that can happen, uh, uh, you know, fairly regularly is, is, is your processor will choose. It says, well, I just, I'm going to prefer to be brighter by default, or I'm going to prefer to be darker by default. And the Sony projectors with this new processor don't do that. They say, well, what's the best idea and solution for this scene, for this frame of video? Um, you know, is this John Wick down in the catacombs where it's very mm -hmm. dark, and now we're going to have a gunfight in pitch black mm -hmm. that's a tricky scene to handle a lot of projectors like you said struggle um, right. um basically there's not the projector just doesn't have enough brightness to recreate all the brightness that's in an hdr piece of material so it has to make educated decisions on or it should make educated decisions on how right. to play that back a lot of times if you do it incorrectly what you end up with is an hdr to sdr converter so, exactly. so, so what you end up with is it looks it doesn't look like HDR no more. It looks like pretty good SDR. So, so yeah, yeah. it art. just looks. It'll either just look brighter than than SDR, or uh -huh. oftentimes, unfortunately, it will just look darker, you exactly. know, than SDR. But if you actually take a look at the measurements, you'll find that the curve that you're supposed to be this exponential curve mm -hmm. uh, doesn't exist. It's just flat. So the 715 that we're talking about today. If you're looking for a native 4K projector with, a, with, with, with native imagers and a dynamic iris and motorized lenses and horizontal vertical end shift and anamorphic capabilities, and you want it to be quiet, you know, um, and you want color accuracy, um, you're going to pay a premium. And that's where, right. that's where this lives. So that's what we say. This is one of the ultimate Christmas presents. Now, um, a lot of times, how much did you say the the nine fifteen retailed for, Rob? I mean the seven fifteen. How much you uh, say $10, the seven fifteen retailed for? Ten thousand dollars. MSRP is ten thousand dollars. Okay, so the seven fifteen retails for ten thousand dollars. And and like I said, if you if that is your budget and you're building a dedicated theater, or you want the very best. Um, this is a great, great, great solution. Yeah. The big thing about it is Sony has a variety of different projectors, all the way up. So whether you're you know 
Elon Musk and you're looking for something for your giant, gigantic home theater, or you're someone who's just becoming, deciding to build their first a media room that they're going to watch a lot of movies right. in, there's something, there's something for you. Now, the one that I want to point out as well is the 295. You mentioned that this is how you get into native, native Sony 4K. 4K. And so how much does this guy retail for? So that retails for, for $5,000. And uh, everything that you talked about so far with the benefit of, of the three chip approach, you know, SXRD, data 4K, great contrast, great color. And of course, you know, the, uh, native 4K resolution holds true for this projector. Um, what, it, what it lacks is that the next generational kind of uplift in processing technology. And it doesn't have the HDR contrast enhancer. It doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't handle HDR. It does mean that it can't do as deep of an analysis um, uh, and for the video that you're watching. You know, it's interesting, you gotta think about it like this. In the world of like processors for like computers, uh, we think, oh, well, if, it, if, a, if a processor is more powerful, the, the ergo it's faster and faster processors uh, mean applications load more quickly. Right, that's how we understand them in the world of computers and smartphones and tablets. But in the world of video processing, right, projectors and televisions, a faster processor doesn't mean your content plays back faster, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do with the extra power? We have more time to spend on each frame of video. We can do a deeper analysis of the objects that are in each frame and to make a better decision for each frame of video. Uh, so as you get a more powerful processor, that's ultimately what happens. Um, it also doesn't have the mechanical iris. Uh, it doesn't have um, uh, what we call lens, pic uh, lens memory or picture position. Um, but that really only applies if you're pairing it with an ultra-wide screen. Um, and uh, uh, the, the other technology we didn't really talk about on the 715 is something called digital focus optimizer, um, which is the ability for the, for the projector to correct for lens distortion. Um, and the 295 lacks uh, that as well. So there, there are some really nice reasons to step up to the 715, but not everyone has been as good as everybody else for Christmas. Um, and of course, everyone has different budgets and, and things that they're trying to achieve. Uh, and so the, the 295 has been the, the most affordable, uh, and I believe it still is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, Phil, mm -hmm. but the most affordable native 4K projector on the market. That and that is that is absolutely um, correct. So it, it comes down to this: if you can afford to get a, um, a a 715, by all means get it. The um, the the extra custom integration features and the bigger brain, the dynamic iris, is worth every penny to step up. There is very 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 few projectors on the market today that can even compete with a 295 when it comes to resolution, color accuracy, um, and, um, and, and all of the basic install features, horizontal and vertical lens shift, um, right. and those types of things. So a lot of projectors will, that you will see in the industry are striving just to compete with a 295. So, and it's an, you will, so if you're looking at this price point, Spending a little bit more money, buy once, cry once, and stepping up to a two ninety five right. from a from a three thousand um, dollar DLP is probably um, would be something that you should think about and definitely consider. You know, now, it's, it's one of those things that that you know, funny. You say buy once, cry once. It's wildly different from the world of television. You know, mm -hmm. I, I buy a TV and when I replace it, the TV I bought last time moves. It just goes to a different room, mm -hmm. right? You so you can track my history of television through my house. From 2020 all the way back to what I started with Sony, you know, 2011, but not in my theater. You know, there's no room in my house for my second projector. So they're in there. They're actually on the floor to. behind me or they're in my garage. Right? I'm lucky enough to have two spaces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you, yeah are, so you are one of the lucky few. Yeah. So, yeah. So a 295 is a great product. So if you're looking in that um, $5,000 range, that is a great, great, great solution. I actually, before I assumed um, projector reviews, I had a, uh, a 295 equivalent for many years, and I thought it was absolutely outstanding. That's stunning, now, right? So just to summarize, and is um, Sony has a wide selection of projectors regardless of your budget 
the 715, the latest video processing with all of the video benefits, um, high right. contrast, great color, all the things that make a Sony a Sony. Also, you have the, the 295, which at under $5,000 is a great way to enter into the world of native 4K projection. And it's still the least expensive in my mind that I know of native 4K three chip um, projector that's on the market today. And we have all these great projectors from Sony. And I'd like to thank Rob for coming. And I keep asking him to bring me projectors. So I'm trying to keep them so I don't have to give it back. But it, uh, they keep know, coming that's... back to my house and taking them. And then I talk him into giving me another one that I can go put back in my theater. Yeah, the more videos we do, the longer you need to keep these. We'll just schedule <laughs> something on a weekly basis. Okay. So so thank you guys for coming. And and like I said, so and thanks, Sony, for coming and talking about their holiday gifts and what would be great presents. So if you're looking for the ultimate um, holiday present or gift present for that projector enthusiast, always take a look at Sony. All right. So take care and we will talk to you soon.